Hello everybody and welcome back to another map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Mercury Farms. This is the much anticipated map from Alien Jim and uh, I had the great pleasure of being able to premiere this map uh, toward the end of August and early in September. Uh, at that point in time the map was uploaded to Giants for testing uh, but little did we know that it was going to take basically two months to finally get out of out of the uh, the testing phase and into full release for the masses to enjoy. This map is for PC and console players, and it is a humdinger of a map with quite some interesting innovations. Let me read you a bit of the description before we jump on in further. It says Mercury Farms with 60 fields that can be reshaped. Cut down any or all hedges and barbed wire fences with a chainsaw, giving you room to rejoin shape the fields to your own liking. Option to build vehicle shelters using the build icons or simply build your own farmyard up using your preferred placeables. Option to build up one, two, or all three animal buildings or plow and turn the area into fields for those that don't want to take care of animals. The option is yours. This map is seasons prepared and this is as close as you're gonna to get to uh, some of the functionality that has been promised for Farm Sim 19 and the ability to basically transform and make your own farms um, right here for Farm Sim 17. Let's go ahead and jump on in. We're going to leave all the DLCs checked and we're going to get rid of these helicopters. We want those for our tour. And I think we're going to jump, I think we're going to ride around in the Toyota today just for funsies. That one? Go ahead and pull up the log while we wait for the map to load up. This is a very small download. In fact, you may download it and then think you didn't get the whole thing because it's about 173 megabytes. Uh, it's one of the smallest maps that I have seen available in the Mod Hub. And here we are. The map has loaded up very quickly, error free. And let's go ahead and take a look at the map. So here's the PDA. The light area is the play area and then the dark shaded area out here is a non-playable area but has decorations you know um landscaping fields are defined roads are defined basically to give you the sense that the map continues on beyond playable area we have all of our standard crops on the map including sugarcane and you can see we start out by owning fields 10 11 and 17. There are four main cell points on the map, including a special cell point here that only takes sunflowers, corn, and potatoes. And then we also have some rather unique cell points that aren't necessarily listed here that will allow you to sell some atypical items like fuel, water, and um, compost or manure I should say. So we started this video on hard mode and even on hard mode there are some crops included in the silos uh, here for us to work with at the beginning. You see from the list of starting equipment nothing is leased. We do have a few things that are fairly old or have a fair high number of hours on them. Erlerman for example, um, the Kroger, Kroger TKD, I believe that's a tipper, and the lizard pickup. We've got a few lizard pickups. Actually, both of them have fairly high usage on them. I'm going to go ahead and borrow some money so that we can buy some animals after we build the animal areas. Take a look at that. And speaking of animals, we have all three animal types on this map sheep, pigs, and cows. We do not start with any animals at the start. Or anything in the various feed troughs. Our silo also has a capacity of 500,000 liters. Let's go ahead and look at that starting equipment. You see, we start with the Hurleman, Lindir, Lindir, Voltra, Case Optum. So we've got four tractors from the start that range in horsepower from 88 all the way up to 288 horsepower. We have front loader arms and a universal bucket for the front loader. 
Case 7130 Harvester with grain header. Small, a nice small 14 foot header. This is typically what you see matched up with the uh, the much smaller case harvester. We've got the Agriliner TDK 302. We've got a couple of those. Cultivator and plow. We've got a cedar, and then a pair of pickup trucks, water trailer, and then a fuel trailer. Now we'll tell you, I would not jump in the map and just start selling this starting equipment off, because you may find these trailers have stuff in them. Cedar may have stuff in it. And the water and fuel trailer may have stuff in it. We're going to go ahead and check that out when we get into the map. As you can see, there is nothing leased at the moment. Go ahead and lease up our Toyota just to drive around in. And let's explore the map at this point. So this is our starting point if you will, our starting farm. We run down here to the road. Okay. We're going to see that basically we have a sign down here that says Mercury Farms. This is our home base, if you will. Mercury Farm. Wonderful signs here. Across the road, we've got another um, placeable area or area that we can build got some got a trailer and a tractor already here and you'll see these gear icons scattered around and then we have this explanation point so if we pull up the f1 menu and we come over here to the explanation point see that if we left click we can show our hide build icons Okay, now if we go over here and click on one, okay, build seed hut. You see that up there in the F1 menu? Let's go ahead and click on that. And now we have our seed and fertilizer fill points. Uh, we may not want that, so we can just go here and we can click on this again. Unseed, unbuild the seed hut. And it goes away. Okay, same thing over here. Build vehicle haul. Big old equipment storage coming in place. Includes lights and triggers for lights and everything. But we may, so, we may decide we don't really want that here. We want to use this for something completely different. Well, we can unbuild it. Okay, we can go over here, and then we can left-click this, and now those icons are missing. Okay, so now we can do whatever we want here. Come in here with a placeable. Say, for example, instead of that building, we wanted to use... This will even fit here. Yeah, we could use this one instead. This is from the Straw Harvest. Okay. Say we wanted to put that down here. Well, we could. Other than the fact that the tractors are there, you can see that we could place that down and um, put that there now. So I'm going to jump in this tractor real quick because I want to see, does this trailer have anything in it? I'm thinking it may have a surprise. It does indeed. It has a load of manure. And this tractor is pretty low on the fuel. Let's go ahead and jump back to the main farm. Now we're back across the street. And we've got our gear icons once again. So if we look at the house here, we can clean up area. So Alien Jim also did um, some other maps. You may know him from Spectacle Island, where you would go around and clean up the... Uh, cut down trees at the main yard and it would clean up debris. This takes it one step further. We've bought the house, but we want to make some house improvements. So there you go. We now are, have ourselves a nice pretty house to live in. Can't go in it, but at least we've got a nice house to look at. 
we do have gold nuggets on the map and I did not intend on showing all of those nuggets not intend on hitting that but uh, well done that now so we're just gonna leave it where it is now we can go over here and clean up the area we can fix our barn our silo see the silo trigger in there and now lights another nugget and now we have our silo here and things continue on as you would expect that's right we have another building here that we can build go ahead and build that one okay and then we have a couple more so another seed hut is going to appear here. I'm not going to build that just for the sake of time. And then we've got another vehicle hall that we can build right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and just check. This tractor. Uh, I want to check the water trailer. Just see if it includes anything. So it has 3,000 liters of water in it. And I want to check this fuel trailer. Oh, I also want to check the cedar. Oh, the cedar does not include anything at the beginning. But the fuel trailer does include 1,300 liters of fuel. So let's say you've built your farm up how you want it to be. You don't want to see these little gear icons. And you come over here, you click this, and now the gear icons are gone. Pretty snazzy, I have to say. That's the main farm. That's the area across the street. Um, I do want to go back tab back into this tractor because I want to run down to the garden center and show you a couple little slick things we got down there Billy and Jim also did Sussex Farm I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Here is the garden center. There's a lot of cell points here at the garden center. Lots of things of interest. The first thing we want to show you here is we have a fuel tank here with white and black trigger markers. This is where we can actually sell fuel. If I bring our fuel tanker down here, I can sell that 1300 liters of fuel here if I want. If we look over here, we have a white and black marker zone for water. So we can sell water down here. We have a sell point here for bales and loose hay and straw. We have our wool sell point. We have a wood chip sell point. We have the normal garden center sell point for crops. Okay. Now we have a marker here and a big door. Well, there are some nuggets of nuggets around the map here. Uh, this is just one of the giant nuggets you'll find. Uh, there are several other giant nuggets scattered around the map. And we have an unloading bay. This is quite interesting. So we have pallets out here. We've got liquid fertilizer. We've got um, poplar. We've got sugar beets. Potatoes. 
pig food, seed, and fertilizer. This will accept any palleted product uh, and buy it back. So let's say you, for some reason you have a, a half a pallet of poplar and you don't really intend on doing any more poplar harvest or poplar planting. You can bring that pallet back here and sell it back. Get some money back for all of your troubles. I'll show you why I brought the manure over here. We also have a cell point for liquid slurry and manure. Okay. Pull one in here. Okay. You can see we, we can sell manure. We just sold made thirty-three dollars off of that. We got potatoes, sugar beets, um, I think that's chaff. Silage. Uh, I guess that's hay. It's pig food. What is this? This must be forage. Or power food. This is power food, silage, chaff. All of that you can sell down here in these individual areas. And up here on this hill we've got six greenhouses. Again, marked with these white and black triggers. Well, what can we do with that? We can actually come up here with our manure or water trailer and we can sell manure or water to our greenhouses up here. These greenhouses do not bring us money, regular income. They are technically sell points for manure and water. Okay. See, I am just made $441 by selling manure to that particular greenhouse. And we've got some, just some spare grass field up here that you can make use of in addition to the starter fields. And you may hear in the background, depending on how loud the volume is, you may hear gunshots. It's kind of interesting that uh, throughout the map, you're going to hear regular, you know, gunshots, which is kind of interesting. And what better place to show you the uh, removable hedges than right here? Come up to the hedge, you can see a kind of a, you know, a uncut tree or a uh, you know, kind of a stump. But if we cut that off here at the top, the hedge. This little section of the hedge is now gone. You know, we can come in here, cut it off, down here at the lower level, move it out of the way. And now we can go through here and get access to this side. Okay. So you can see this hedge has a kind of a collision on it. There, you could sneak through if you walk, try to walk through at the right spot. In general, there's collisions. You see, I can't go through. Can't go through. And everything. So you can come in here. Cut these logs out. Cut these uh, posts out. And now we've got a nice wide spot here. We can come in with our logging trailer or whatever. Let's jump back here to the main farm. Now we've got a a uh, barbed fence. So let's just cut the top off. Just the wee tippy top. And look at that. Now I can get through. Made a little gate, if you will. A little passage. Okay. Let's do the same thing here. Let's just cut the tip... Okay, so now I've got passage, but this thing is still here. The pole is still here. Okay, or I could come in here and cut this off at the bottom.
Okay. And I can get rid of that. Okay, get rid of that. And then I can come in here and cut the top off of this one. Okay. And now I have this let me put this one down. Now I have just made myself a brand new entrance into field twenty. By just cutting some uh, some of the posts down and cutting the tip off of this one so that then it gets rid of the spare barbed wire. So there is a way of getting into this field, but uh, you know, maybe you wanted to make it wider. Maybe you didn't want to have to come all the way down from there. So field 20, for example, on um, field size and price is 0.82 hectares, almost $20,000. Let's go ahead and check out field price for 19. 19 is 0 0.61 hectares, 14,800 14, basically. And you may think, well, why do I start out? Why is field 11? Why do I have withered sunflowers in field 11? Let's go check out field 17. Why do I have withered straw or, or wheat, say, in field 17? Why do y'all think we have withered crops in the fields that we own? Let's see if field 10 is withered. I forget, quite frankly. It is indeed. We have withered um, canola in field 10. So why do you think we have withered crops from the very start? Well, if you remember, we had a run-down abandoned house. We had a run-down abandoned silo. None of these buildings were here. Uh, the house was sold by us. We bought it. Basically, the farmer just... Uh, something happened. The farmer left after he planted his crops. No one came in here and harvested his crops. So they've been here all season and basically have withered away and died. And that's how we have to start. We have to start by clearing out the old old crops. Let's go dead, go ahead and come down here to the shop where we've got our Toyota. Okay. So the shop has got some rather interesting things going on with it also. So we've got our normal shop trigger here. Okay. And we have two customized and repair triggers. One here, this area. And one right here for the area on the left. So if we take a look there, see the height on that trigger is pretty dang high. That is because if we want to, we can bring our vehicle in here. And it was like this on Sussex Farm also. Let's check this trailer and see if we uh, have anything in it or not. Nope, that one's empty. Pull all the way in. Check that. We can customize it and also then lift. Lift it. Okay. And then we can pretend to do our work under the uh, frame and everything. It does say you must drive forward as far as you can uh, to prevent the vehicle from basically floating in midair. Once you understand that, you can get rid of the sign so you don't see that constantly. Then drop her back down after we've done our work. And then something else here at the shop that we've got is we've got these four field icons over here. Go ahead and check out this one. See it's for field 6, 2 point, sorry. 2.46 hectares, $19,900. Let's 
Well, field six is a grass field. Is actually this field up here, hidden by this thing's on. No, we can't even turn it. Well, that's field six up there, okay? So field six is a field we can buy, but the buy icon is down here at the shop. Same with field 60. There are four grass fields that are buyable down here. Field 59.94 hectares, $7,000, just $8,000 for that one. 1.83 hectares, field 60, $14,800. You get the point. Also down here at the shop, have a fuel buy point, as well as a sell point to sell our crops around here on the side. Another couple gun shots. Alright, let's go ahead and back on out of here. And kind of explore the map. Oops. Explore the map a bit. Okay. First thing we want to do is we want to run over here to the BGA. Just give it a good look. Whoa. There's field 60 over here to our right. That's one of those grass fields that we have to buy at the, uh, at the shop. As is field six here to our left. Go ahead and come on in here to the BGA. And you can see we've got one of those glowing gear icons. And you can tell that we can build something here. We can build a vehicle hall. There you go. Or we could obviously unbuild it by just selecting that. We could clean up this area, should we so wish. Okay. Use it to store whatever we want down here. You can left click here to hide those gear icons. Once we've built it, built the area up, or if we don't really care about building the area up, then we've got our standard BGA down here. We have two large silage bunkers. We've got our digestate trigger here. We've got this huge thing just spinning around uh, the digestate or whatever. Then we've got our silo king in here buried down underneath this plate. And anywhere you see these little light triggers Tells you if there's something that you can interact with, you can click on that and open the hatch. And there is the digester, the silo king. We're done. We can close it up so that it is uh, it closed up for the weather and everything protected. Nothing undesirable falls in there. I like how we've got these big rolls of plastic to uh, cover our silage, and when we're done. So we can get rid of those gear icons just by clicking there. Go ahead and let's actually go ahead and make our way down this way to the animal dealer. Just down this windy road. So guys, let me know in the comments so far, what do you think of the map? What do you think of this concept of basically building up or not building up your play areas? Uh, you can either use the vehicle halls that are included with the map, or you can build up your own. Here we have a just a general placeable zone that you could place something. And this is a fairly large area. I'm going to use this pellet hall as a frame of reference because we know those of us that have the straw harvest or that have seen it know that this is quite a large building. Let's take a look at 
maybe something else that gives you a frame of reference, like this large vehicle shelter. You all know how big that thing is. See that we can easily put one there, one there. Easily have two here side by side. Let's continue on down here to the uh, animal dealer. There is the, oops, there is the garden center. Right. We're also going to explore this water area um, once we get done with the, uh, well, let's, let's stop. Let's go back here. While we're down here, let's go ahead and explore this water area. While we're here, so down here we've got interesting thing. We've got a fence here. Got a couple nuggets, uh, but we got a barrier here. We can't get over there. We've got some nuggets on the other side of the barrier. I'll leave you all to try to figure out how to get to those. But what we've got here is we've got a, you know, some a water below pond. Okay, pond's kind of low. And we've got, look here, an interactive trigger and a valve says we can fill the pond so let's go ahead and click that and see what happens click it hey I think I've clicked it I may have clicked it and unclicked it too many times yep I just unclicked it yeah we just Turn valve. That's what I was waiting to see happen. And look here, the water level is rising. Okay, you see the water level rising. Oh, let's let's get up here out of the way. So now we can basically come in here with our water trailer and fill up free water down here at the pond. This will continue to rise until basically this, um, this little rowboat is is basically floating in the water. At this point, if we wanted to drive through the water, we could. See it now rocking. This, the rowboat is now fully floating in the water. And that's about the high point. Of the water. Thank goodness we didn't park our Toyota too far into the water. But isn't that pretty cool? You know, we can come in here and we can uh, turn that valve and make it uh, make it lower and everything. Once we're done. Let's head on. Further down the road here. It's got some row houses along here. There are some nuggets there. We also have an egg cell point and a grain cell point there to the left. Another large placeable area here to our right. Then we've got some, I guess it's called agroforestry um, strips. We've got rows of trees and then a thin row of crops planted. And then we've got one, two, we've got five additional um, little narrow strip fields that we can plant crops in. And in theory, we can come in here and plant trees in between those if we want. 
Or we could completely plow that whole area up and just make one large field. Because you can see the way these fields, like these three fields here, 52, 53, and 54, we could own all three of those. We could cut out the hedges between all those fields, grind down the stumps, make it into one large field if we wanted to, buy two, make two into one large field, whatever we want. The map is very customizable, very, very much can, uh, you can make it your own, uh, if you will. So down here at the animal dealer, we have another area where we can sell water. We can sell grain crops down here. And of course we can buy our animals. Is the trigger to buy our animals. Uh, and they will also buy some hay, straw, and grass bales. And the mother of all nuggets, there's another massive nugget down here. Pretty funny indeed. Alright, let's go ahead and head on back to the next area. Um, that's going to be, we're going to try to make our way over to the animal areas at this point. All the animals are at the same spot on the map with the exception of chickens. Just as an FYI. So we're going to head on down here and make a left at the between the agroforestry fields and the large placeable area, which is just below nor um, field six. Which again, if you remember, is one of those grass fields we talked about uh, that you were able to purchase. Let's head on up here. Off there in the distance is the main farm where we start out at, just to give you a frame of reference. And let's just stop here and just check out Field 29. It's one of the larger fields on the map. Just again, to give you another frame of reference as to field prices. Field 29 is 2.34 hectares, $56,000. Now you could come in here, you could cut down these hedges cut and clear these trees out of here and you can basically make yourself a little field right here if you wanted to the map is totally customizable by you if you want to go haul crazy you can cut down every tree every hedge every fence and basically be able to make you know a few really big fields that were only really separated up by a few uh, concrete areas and some roads so here is the animal area. And when you look at it at the outset, you think, well, okay. This looks like a whole big bunch of nothingness. And it is at this point because none of the animal zones have been built out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to park the Jeep here, the Toyota here, out of the way because... Uh, I want to warn you, when we build these animal areas, if you've got something parked, say right here, okay, for example, uh, if a building spawns in, uh, whatever you've parked here could potentially be launched into orbit. That's not a good thing. So we're just going to park it over here. Got another clean area that if we hit it, we're going to build up, and basically it's another silo. So some of the crops that we start out with may be at the main farm, and other crops may be stored over here. So that's something to be of, take of note. You have a water trigger here. And let's just go over here and just build out these other areas. So we can build a vehicle hall here behind us. We can build out the cow area. Okay, and it includes all of the triggers and everything all show up. So now we have our silage trough, our water trough, we have our grass trough, we have 
the straw trigger right here. We have the animal buy and deliver trigger right here. Okay. And we have the slurry and manure piles right over here. The slurry trigger and the manure pile. And there is the nav mesh for our cows. Now, if we didn't want this, we would just, uh, well, we would just unbuild it and wouldn't have to use cows. We wouldn't have this wasted space. We would have access to that big grass field to do whatever we wanted with. We could plow up this area and do whatever we wanted with. And then to complete the cow area, we have now a silage trigger or silage bunker. Over here, we've got the sheep area. Okay, again, this is the sheep area. That's the sheep hill. We could uh, leave it as it is and not own any sheep and make use of this however we wanted. Or if we wanted to have sheep, we could just build it. You see some trees populated in the back. And a shed came in. We've got our grass trough. Got our water trough. We've got in here the sheep delivery point. Okay. And we have our wool trigger right here. Also. And that's the sheep area. The sheep. Let's go ahead and again, if we don't want these hedges, we just cut them down. That leaves the pig area right here. It's quite a big pig area. You need to apologize. I don't know if you can hear my my son grunting and, and making noises. He's he's playing Wii Resort and uh, he loves it. So here we are building in our sheep pen and everything. Again, we have our slurry trigger, manure pile. We have our pig trigger. We have our straw trigger, pig food, and water. Then we have our pigs. Nav you know, going around here includes these huts and various shelters and everything for our pigs. Um, now, if we don't want these, if we don't want pigs, well, we'll just unbuild it. Okay? And we don't have to have it. So we just go in here. We could sell our pigs. Okay. Good. Unbuild this area. Okay. We could go over here and click this trigger. Basically hide the build icons. Okay. Now they're gone. And now we can make use of this pig area however we want. So we can have just sheep and cows. We can come in here. We could plow this up if we wanted. And we can make ourselves a field. And never have pigs. Never have any wasted space as a result of the pigs. Or anything. So what a, what a great and ingenious idea. Really, to be able to have that kind of flexibility. And not have any wasted space. You know... Lots of, lots of maps, well, pretty much every map, you know, if you don't do pigs, either avoid that area, you never go over there, um, and as a result, you know, you, you end up having some loss of some play space. Now, the last thing I want to do is come up here uh, where we have the chickens and everything. We're going to come up here on top of Windmill Hill. Some more fields. And whatnot. And up here we've got a cell point. Up here. We do have that's the map edge here. Just just so you know. Oops. Give you a hint. 
There's something massive in there. All right, any rate. So this is the map edge. Okay, so we can't we can't go past there. We can't magically cut these hedges down. But if you look up here, you know, doesn't look like that's the map edge. Map goes on for quite a distance. Um, that's what really makes you gives you a, an immersion level in not feeling that you're right here up against the edge of the map because you're not. That's become something that a lot of map makers have have learned to do, and that is not necessarily uh, you build right all the way out to the absolute fringe of the playable space, but to leave some space there. So here we have one more area that I'm going to show you where we can build some stuff. So we can build a vehicle hall here. Small little building. Okay. We can build a larger vehicle hall here. And again, if you don't want that building, unbuild it, hide the icons, and put your own placeable in there. Or plow it up, make it a little field. Whatever the heck you want to do is what you can do. So then we have our chickens. Okay? So we can build a chicken area. Okay, and there's three more. Two more that we can build out. Okay, we can build that one. Okay, here you can see one of our eggs. Okay. Let's go ahead and build that one in. See another egg. Another egg over here. Then pick those up. And you can build this one. There we go. Or you could just choose not to build those and just have the chickens over there. There's the Mercury Poultry Farm. And then once you're done, once you've got the space designed how you want it, well, you just come over here. And click, and now the icons are gone. You don't have those icons in your way. You've got the space how you want it. Be that using these buildings that come with the map that you can build out, or put your own down. It's up to you. You can see if we look across there, that's where the BGA is. So guys, that is basically the map. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the map itself. What do you think of this buildable I buildable spaces idea? Um, you know, this was kind of in the works by Alien Jim back in the summer before a lot of this stuff was um, was announced for 19. It's pretty interesting, but uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Oh wait, we're not done. We're not done, silly me. There's one more spot to go check out. There is a secondary yard down here that we want to go ahead and take a look at. And here it is. So this is where our second pickup truck is located. Uh, this time we've got a decent house already. We've got, though, a third farm silo we could build out. So I know some people might say, well, it's the same building. It's just repeated over and over and over with different textures. Yeah, it is. And part of that may have been to um, keep the file size of the map down. Other other th aspects may have been just the the difficulty in in getting these triggers and everything to work, uh, and just the desire to uh, you know get some buildings that we that he knew worked, and just use them over and over. But again, other than these silos, you don't have to have any of these buildings built out. You can build your own vehicle hall. I think this is another seed area. Yep, build a seed hut. And that's it. Nice little little secondary yard here. And these doors do open up. 
Then once you've got it how you want it, you can hide these icons, and they go away. There you go. All right, guys, it's a pleasure to uh, to finally have Mercury Farms out there for everybody to watch. I want to thank you for watching the video and everything. And like I said, let me know in the comments what do you think of the map itself? What do you think of the um, buildable concepts uh, and everything? I know lots of folks that had seen the premiere videos were eagerly anticipating this. Checking the mod hub pretty much every day since seeing those premieres and uh, sending me messages going, you ever, have you heard anything about Mercury? Have you heard anything about Mercury? Um, so the other day when I saw this was released, I was I was beside myself ecstatic uh, and everything. So until next time, guys, happy farming.